welcome to Interview, a production of the Government Information Service. I am Jolene Bissett Joseph. Census 2020 has been launched, but what does that mean for the general public at large? Well, to tell us a little bit more about Census 2020 and how it will affect everybody, I am actually joined by Mr. Edwin St. Catherine, who is a consultant at the Central Statistical Office. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, and uh, it's very good to be um, you know, listened to by the general public okay. on your no problem. broadcast. All right. Now, first of all, can you very broad, broadly just remind us of what a census actually is? Okay, a census is a total counting of all dwelling units, households, buildings, persons mm -hmm. in the country. All right, we, we use many different concepts mm -hmm. to measure uh, these various uh, components of mm -hmm. the census. Mm -hmm. At the, the bottom line is that you are counting the people and also mm -hmm. their characteristics, okay. male, female, religion, migration, education, and, and all of these associated characteristics. Okay, and what are the benefits of um, doing this activity? Okay, so there are many benefits to it. Uh, one fairly significant and glaring issue that, f that faces St. Lucia now is uh, the reform of the constituency boundaries. Oh, okay. Within our constitution, we, we technically, each constituency should be about the same size. But mm -hmm. over the years, mm -hmm. there are great disparities. For example, between Denry South mm. and Grosilet, you see Grosilet's population north of 28,000. Mm -hmm. You see Denry South mm -hmm. around 5,000 oh, in wow. terms of electors. Okay. okay, so that sort of disparity uh, exists most egregiously in that case. But in many other cases, the Castries constituencies mm -hmm. are significantly larger than the rural ones because of urban, mm -hmm. because of rural to urban migration that has occurred in the last a uh, few decades. Okay, all right. Now, Census 2020, as I say, stated, has been launched now. Right. So people can expect, I guess, to see um, representatives coming around and collecting data. How, first of all, can we, especially in the, the, the era we live in now, how can we actually um, be able to distinguish between the layman and the people that will be coming around to be collecting the data when they come um, okay, to so your homes? Okay, so all enumerators, mm -hmm. supervisors, area supervisors, district coordinators will be issued with an official ID card. Okay. And uh, they will also be able, we will also have a hotline mm -hmm. that people can call to validate the credentials of the person that has come to visit them. Okay. Uh, we do now have a mapping exercise on the ground that started off with uh, an issue with an ID card, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the people were credentialed, mm -hmm. they did not have a full ID. So we've remedied that situation mm -hmm. and going forward, mm -hmm. everybody will be fully uh, identifiable to members of the public. Okay, all right. Yeah. And how long exactly will the activity go on for? Because as I said it again, right. it's just been launched, but how long can we expect people to be coming around? Okay, the first initial set of activities that are occurring in the next in the months leading to the census the mm -hmm. census officially starts in the middle of may okay 12th of may mm -hmm. and then it continues from the 12th of may intensively for three months oh, okay but the prior to this from now till the 12th of may mm -hmm. um well technically it should be finished by like mid-april mm -hmm. we are going to be geo-referencing every building on the island so we, um every building on the island so we have deployed some 30 persons mm -hmm. to engage in that activity we mm -hmm. want to know where all the buildings are and we want to classify the buildings in terms of whether it contains residential units dwelling units businesses, mm -hmm. institutions, meaning mm -hmm. it's a hotel mm -hmm. or it's uh, a prison or it's, you know, an, an institution, a public hospital mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. Whether it's another public building like health centers and so on. We want to classify all the buildings firstly on the island. Mm -hmm. And then when the census starts more intensively, mm -hmm. then we will, we will send the enumerators out to the, 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 all of the buildings to document their contents. Okay. Dwelling units, households, mm -hmm. persons, um, even, um, 
even persons in St. Lucia at the time mm -hmm. who do not live in St. Lucia. Oh, how, yes. how, how, how does so that So there work? are two classes of persons, right? Mm -hmm. There are two ways that the census is defined. Mm -hmm. It's defined via what is called a de jure process mm -hmm. where you count usual residents. Mm -hmm. These are people who, who are, have been in St. Lucia for over a year mm -hmm. and intend to make St. Lucia their home for the next year. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the usual residents. Mm -hmm. Then there are those persons who are here temporarily. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So most people would be interested in the de jure or usually resident population. Okay. But you, you have to also be able to, to, to account for the additional ad hoc part of the population that are residents in hotels and things like that. Okay, brilliant. Okay, okay. Yeah. All, right. all right. Well, we're going to take a short break now. Yes. When we come back, I want to go more into detail about what people can expect in the questions. Okay, but as I said, good. we're just going to take a short break. We'll be back in a moment. Right. One of the eight universally accepted rights of the consumer is the right to safety. This means that consumers must have the right to be protected against products, production processes and services which are hazardous to life or health. Such products and services must meet established national standards. These standards give the consumers the assurance that the product is safe for use or consumption. Welcome back to Interview. I am joined here today with, by Mr. Edwin St. Catherine, and we are talking Census 2020. Now, before we went to the break, Mr. St. Catherine, I was saying to you that just so people can get an uh, idea of the kind of questions they will be asked to answer, could you just give us a brief, um, some brief insight into what they can expect? Okay, so we cover housing or dwelling unit characteristics, like right. if you are a, a renter, how much rent do you pay per month? Mm -hmm. So we get a distribution of the payments of rents around the island. Mm -hmm. We will also look at the issue of overcrowding. So we look at the number of rooms in the dwelling unit relative to the population and compute the amount of um, difficulty or deprivation the household has with respect to being overcrowded. We mm -hmm. look at crime, mm -hmm. uh, especially those occurring in the last 12 months. That will allow us to rank all the communities in terms of relative safety with respect to crimes against persons, mm -hmm. like a, uh, you know, like an assault, yeah. uh, versus uh, crime against your property, like mm -hmm. somebody steal your car's tires. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so we look at that. We will look at um, household assets. Right. We will look also, We one major move away from the last census is that we are looking at a reference person rather than a household head. Okay. Household heads tend to, to have a male uh -huh. um, dominance okay. uh, phenomenon okay. built into it. So mm -hmm. to avoid that bias, mm -hmm. uh, we do like the international uh, recommendations mm -hmm. are suggesting mm -hmm. that uh, we do that. We look at internal migration, mm -hmm. very important. We look at um, disability is a very significant one. That's mm -hmm. the only place you really get best information mm -hmm. on disability, disabled persons in the population. Okay. Very, very important. We look at unemployment, economic mm -hmm. activity. Um, we look, of course, at income. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit of, for some people, an uncomfortable question. And, mm -hmm. of course, fertility. Okay. How fertile is the population? Okay. Our population has not been too fertile, mm -hmm. quote unquote, because our fertility rate has been 1.6 mm -hmm. persons per per um, per fertile woman. That is a okay. woman between the age of 15 and 50. Right. Yeah. All right. So yeah. it means we are. Our population may be may be. When we count it, it mm -hmm. may be depressed. Okay, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Now, you were talking there about, I think when you mentioned um, economics, you even said that that might be a subject a lot of people might not want to discuss. Right. Um, can we just, can we touch on confidentiality of the, the information collected? This is going to be totally confidential, yeah. wherever information is collected, right? Yeah. For the census mm -hmm. to be done, the a law has to be passed, mm -hmm. okay, um, protecting the census data set. Right. Okay, especially the individual records. So mm -hmm. the census office cannot reveal any individual's record. Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, it is protected by law. Mm -hmm. The census office itself can be sued mm -hmm. if that information comes to light. No, that's the individual okay. in particular can be sued because we make them sign mm -hmm. an oath of secrecy. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we take very, very seriously the confidentiality of this information. Okay. Uh, of course, there are, I think there, there's going to be an, uh, an issue with after one, after I don't know, 65 to 75 years, mm -hmm. the record exists, mm -hmm. whether you put it in the archive and make it available to the descend your descendants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, US, the U.S. does that. Okay, and I think okay. that is something that we probably should be pursuing um, in the future so okay. that, you know, our descendants, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, can, can, can review yeah, where, where, where they came from. I understand. Yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> now, something else I want to touch on very quickly because we are running out of time yeah. is I know that a new system is being brought in for us to help us to um, accumulate all the data and such, like right. called the CAPI system. Yes. Tell us a little bit about why, why that system is being brought in and, right. and basically how it's going to help in the collection of data. Okay. The, the, it's going to enable the census to be georeferenced. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we do now is based on Google Maps and all of that. So mm -hmm. we leverage a lot of that technology. We mm -hmm. leverage tablet technology, right. satellite technology. Mm -hmm. The fact that a lot of satellite maps are georeferenced mm -hmm. and we'll collect the data to a georeferenced point. Right. So that if you have a community project and you want to know how the residents within one mile of that community project are affected by that project, mm -hmm. you can pull up the data on just that community, on just that portion of the community. Typically, census data would be published by enumeration area or the whole community mm -hmm. and not by portions of it and so on. Mm -hmm. But by geo-enabling the census, you have the possibility of doing a lot better small area statistics in terms of location of health facilities, mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. business places, mm -hmm. and all of that. Okay. So that is that is the, the, the core of the argument for that approach. Okay, all right. And yeah. I believe in, in some respects it actually helps with the whole confidentiality thing as well, I guess. It does. It doesn't have to go through so many people, right? Right. Yeah. It, does not, mm -hmm. it does not have to be manually entered. Right. The data is not on paper, mm -hmm. so you don't have two copies lying around. Right. We, we sync it via a secure link between the tablet and the cloud. Uh, and, and the data is stored in a secure location, okay. HTTPS, mm -hmm. the same sort of um, link that you use for your bank account. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, yeah. we have run out of time, sorry to say, but before I go, is there anything you would like to say to the general public? Because as I said to you, it's an yeah. activity that obviously cannot be done if they are not part of it. So what yeah. would you say to them to ensure to them that this is something we really must be taking part in? Cooperation of the general public is key to a successful census. Okay. The more, the greater the level of participation in a census, the more successful it is. Okay, so uh, it is one of the most, uh, it is one event that incorporates every single person. Mm -hmm. Everyone is included, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, the cooperation of the general public uh, in, in allowing us to get all this important information mm -hmm. is significant and is key to its success. Okay. All right. Brilliant. All well, right. thank you for joining us today, Mr. St. Catherine. Yes. And I hope the census goes wonderfully. It'd be good to have you back again, actually, to talk to you later, maybe about no telling us how at everything all. went. Okay? No problem. We've all been right. doing some testing and all of that, so I can always give an update. Brilliant. Okay. All right. All right. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us for interview. Stay tuned to the National Television Network. Bye-bye for now.